Hello and welcome to this next video on the Comp 1511 Assignment 2. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about what the Pokedex struct is, what the PokeNode struct is, uh, a little bit about how the Pokemon work, and we'll look at how you can write the add Pokemon function. So for a start, I want to talk a bit conceptually about like what this Pokedex struct is, what the PokeNode struct is, because I know they've been a bit confusing for some people. Okay, so over here on this side, we have the Pokedex struct and the PokeNode struct. I'm going to start with the PokeNode struct because that's similar to Linkless that you might have seen so far. So in our PokeNode struct, we have our struct PokeNode star next. So this is our next pointer to take us to the next node in our Linkless. And then we have this Pokemon Pokemon. So this is different from the normal Linkless that you will have seen before. But that's okay. Conceptually, it's still the same. Conceptually, we still have, you know, one PokeNode struct which will point to another Pokenode struct, which will point to another one, which will point to null at the end. So it's just like a normal linked list in that sense. But instead of there being int, we have these Pokemon Pokemon instead. So this capital P Pokemon, I'll talk more about those in another video in detail about what that actually means and how you can interact with them. But for the purposes of, of this video, for the purposes of just working with them, you don't actually need to know anything about this capital P Pokemon. Over here on the right hand side, it's effectively just a black box, a green square in this case, which contains a Pokemon. You can't directly interact with that, like you can't poke into that box of the Pikachu and work out what its what its name, what its height is, and so on. To you, it's just there is a Pokemon. But you don't need to be able to interact with it directly to add it into your link list, right? All we need to do is to keep track of the fact that we do have these Pokemon blobs and associate those with each of our nodes in our link list. So that's this PokeNode struct, similar to a normal link list, but like I said, but it's got a Pokemon instead of an int. In terms of what that would look like, I've drawn an empty one over here. We can see the next pointer points to null, uh, the Pokemon points to null. And when I wanted to add a Pokemon to my Pokedex, I would make one of these structs. So if I wanted to make a new PokeNode struct, right, it'd have these fields, the next field and the Pokemon field, just draw a capital P for now. So the next field, I mean, for now, would point to null. I've just got to note it's not in a, link, in a list at all. But the Pokemon field, the, rather than being an int, like the number three, for example, this is just a pointer to one of these Pokemon down here. So the PokeNode itself doesn't store the information about the Pokemon directly. It just has a pointer to one of these Pokemon. Okay, so this PokeNode that I've drawn down here has a pointer to this Pokemon down here, which has a Pikachu in it. Uh, I don't have to know that it's a Pikachu, I don't have to know the name or the types or anything like that. All I have in my PokeNode struct is this pointer to a Pokemon. That's this Pokemon Pokemon over here in the struct. So that's what a PokeNode struct is. It's like a normal linked list struct, except instead of an int or some data, it's got a Pokemon. But let's have a talk about this Pokedex struct over here, because this is something that we haven't really talked about much before. So this Pokedex struct, it's not a, a linkless node struct. It doesn't have sort of a next pointer and some data in it. It's just this standalone struct that you'll have one of these, which represents your Pokedex. And that contains the key to all the information in your Pokedex. So for now, with the starter code we've given you, it's just got this Pokenode star head. So pointed to the start of the link list. But you might want to add more fields to it in the future. So for example, the number of things on the list, the current thing that you're looking on the list, and so on. So let's look at how these join together. Um, I've drawn sort of an example Pokedex here with the head pointer just pointing to null. So if we were inserting Pokemon into our Pokedex, it would start out being null. Like uh, we don't have anything in our Pokedex to start out with. It's just empty. And so then when we want to add some Pokemon, we need to make some of these Pokenode structs like I've got over here. So let's say that I wanted to add this Pokemon here, Pikachu, into the Pokedex. The first thing I would need to do, right, is I'd need to make a Pokenode struct to store it in. So I'll make that over here. It's got two fields, the next field and the Pokemon field, I'll just write N and P. Uh, the next field is going to start out pointing to null because there's nothing else after it in the list, it's just a node by itself. The Pokemon field just has a pointer to a Pokemon. So let's have this one have a pointer to this Pikachu Pokemon over here. So remember, it doesn't have the, the name or anything like that stored directly in it. It's just a pointer to one of these Pokemon. So then, of course, to add it into my Pokedex, I need to add it into the link list. Uh, at the moment, the Pokedex is empty. The head just points to null. So instead of pointing to null, I'd want to make the head point to my uh, new Pokenode that I've just created here. Hopefully that makes sense so far. If I wanted to add another Pokemon to my Pokedex, for example, if I wanted to add this Bulbasaur, 
to my Pokédex. I would again have to make another Pokénode. So I'll scroll over here and do that. Another Pokénode. Remember that it's got a next field and a Pokémon field. The Pokémon field is just going to be appointed to one of these Pokémon over here. I, again, I don't have the details stored directly, just to point it to that Pokémon. The next field of this is going to start out being null, because it's not pointing anywhere. And because I want to be adding this to the end of my list, to the end of my Pokédex, I will then need to look at this previous node I had here. And its next field, instead of pointing to null, should point to this new Poké node that I've created. So hopefully that's making sense so far. But let's have a look at some of the functions that you'll be implementing. So, for a start, the add Pokémon function. This is given two things. It's given a Pokédex Pokédex. So that's this Pokédex struct we had over here, with just the head in it so far. And it's given a capital P Pokémon Pokémon. And so that's just these Pokémon we had down here in these little boxes. So effectively, add Pokémon is given a Pokédex and a Pokémon, and it needs to add that into the Pokédex. Cool, so let's look at this add Pokémon function. Uh, like I said before, it's given a Pokédex Pokédex. So this is your Pokédex that you'll be adding the Pokémon into. And it's given a Pokemon Pokemon, a capital P Pokemon. And that's one of these Pokemon that I've got down the bottom here, which it'll be inserting into the Pokedex. So, like I said before, to add something into the Pokedex, first you need to make a new Poke node to put the Pokemon in, and then you need to add that to the end of your Pokedex. So, for example, let's say that I've got the add Pokemon function called. Uh, for the Pokedex here, it's given a pointer to this Pokedex struct I've drawn here. And for the Pokemon field, it's been given a pointer to this Charmander that I've drawn down here. So what this function will have to do in this case is make a new Pokenode, uh, put the Charmander into that Pokenode, and then add that to the end of the Pokedex. So the first thing we want to do is make a new Pokenode. So we'll do that using malloc or something like that to get the memory. Uh, afterwards, that will give us this blob of memory with a next field and a Pokemon field. I just done NNP for short. So after I've made a new Pokenode, I need to add the Pokemon to the Pokenode. So after I've made the Pokenode, I then need to add the Pokemon to the Pokenode. Now this is fairly straightforward. I've been given a pointer to this Pokemon here, right? This Pokemon, Pokemon. So the lowercase p Pokemon is a variable name that refers to a Pokemon that I've got. And that refers to one of these ones down here. So we decided it was going to be Charmander. So all I would have to do for that would be to set this Pokemon field to be pointing to the variable that I've been passed in. So in terms of what that would look like in terms of code, if I've got a new Poké node, let's say that I've got a variable here, node, I've gotten some memory from malloc, to add the Pokémon to the Poké node, uh, to make this P field here, the Pokémon field here, point to this Pokémon, all I have to say is node arrow Pokémon, which refers to this field here, um, or this field here in this example one I've got down here, node area Pokemon equals Pokemon. And so that Pokemon here refers to this Charmander we've got down here, right? All we're doing in our node is we're adding a pointer to the Pokemon that we've been passed in. And then for its next field, it's not going to point anywhere, right? For now, there's nothing else in the list so that's going to point to null. So in terms of the code, that would look something like node error next equals null. Cool. So the steps we need to do for that, first of all, I'll make a new Poke node add the Pokemon to that Pokenode, and then the third step is going to be to add it to the list, add it to the Pokedex. So to go about adding it to the Pokedex, so we'll be wanting to add it to the end of the Pokedex, the end of the list of Pokenodes that we've got, because of course we always want to be adding the new Pokemon to the end of the list. So to make this a bit simpler, I reckon that we should write a helper function that will let us add something to the end of our Pokedex. So in this case, let's actually make two helper functions. One of them that will make a new Pokenode and then add a Pokemon to that node, and then a second one that will let us add that Pokenode that we've made to the Pokédex. Cool. So in terms of the first helper function to make a new Pokenode, here's a function prototype that I prepared earlier. This function will be given a Pokémon, this Pokémon Pokémon here. So that's this blob here. It's a pointer to this blob of memory that happens to have a Charmander in it. And it's going to return a struct Pokenode star. So it's going to return a pointer to a Pokenode struct. So what this function would do, we're not going to write the code for it, but the steps this would want to follow would be, first of all, to get some memory. So malloc some memory. And then, second of all, add the Pokemon to that Pokenode. So again, like I had earlier, assuming that the memory we got back we'd stored in some variable called node, 
to add the Pokemon to the Pokenode, we don't have to copy its name or anything like that. We just say node arrow Pokemon. And so that second Pokemon there is this Charmander that we've been passed into our function. Cool. And so then the last step would just be to return the new node that you've made. So you'd just say return node. So I highly recommend making a helper function like this to make a new Pokenode. It'll make it a lot simpler. You just call this function, giving it the Pokemon that you are passed into the add Pokemon function. And it'll return you back a node with this Pokemon stuck into it. So that'll help you cover these first two steps here, where you make a new Pokenode and put the Pokemon into it. Then for the next step, adding uh, your Pokenode to the end of the Pokedex. So again, I highly recommend you make a helper function called add to end or something to that extent that will help you add uh, this Pokenode here. So the Pokenode that you've made from your new Pokenode function and add this to the end of the list of Pokemon in your Pokedex. So the first time you call this, when you insert the first Pokemon into your Pokedex, your Pokedex struct will be empty. Uh, this parameter here, Pokedex Pokedex, you're given a pointer to your Pokedex struct that you will have made from the new Pokedex function, for example. And to start out with, like I said, it's empty. The head will just point to null. You're also given this Pokenode struct, so that's the thing we made before, something along the lines of this. Uh, so its Pokemon field would be pointing to a Pokemon, so for example, this Pikachu here. So what we want to do is we want to add this Pokenode here, so it's sort of the Pokenode and then the associated Pokemon. We want to add that into our link list, into our list of Pokemon. So conceptually, it's hopefully fairly straightforward. We, we would literally just make our head pointer point to this Pokenode. So again, that's this struct Pokenode star node we've got here. This thing here is called node. We would make the head pointer inside the Pokedex just point to this node we've got here. Uh, when we made this, we set the, the next field of it to be null. So this is our list complete. We've got our Pokedex struct here. Uh, we've got our first Pokenode here. And that contains the next pointer of null, and then the Pokemon with this Pikachu here. Cool, so we've added the first node into our Pokedex. The second time that your function gets called, the add to end function, it would be given this node here, and then so the node parameter here to the function would be this node here, the new node to add. And it would also be given this Pokedex pointer, which again is a pointer to this Pokedex we've got here. So the Pokedex at the moment contains uh, this first Pokenode we made with the, with the Pikachu in it. And what we want to do here is we want to go all the way to the end of the list of Pokenodes, which is just this one Pokenode here, and make its next field point to this new node here that we've been given, which is called node. The way that we would do that is we would go through this Pokenode list from the Pokedex. We'd go look at this one, keep on going to it at the end. Well, this is the end, so we're there already. Then we would make the end one's next pointer point to this new node we've been given here called node. Again, we don't have to add any information about the Pokemon to the Pokenode. We've already put the Pokemon in that Pokenode in the previous function. Uh, all this has to do is add that, po add that new node that it's been given into this Pokedex. Cool. So then the next time we get called, the third time we get called, uh, again, this first parameter, this Pokedex here, will be the same as this Pokedex I've got here. This node parameter will be the new node I've got over here with the Charmander. And the function, again, will have to go and find the end of the Pokedex, find the end of the list of Pokemon in the Pokedex, and then insert this Pokenode after the end of all the, all the nodes in the Pokedex. So again, the way you'd do this, you'd start at the first node, you'd move along to the second node, you'd keep on moving until you got to the last node, which in this case is the second node, and then you'd make its next field, this next field here, point to this new node here that you've been given, this node that was passed into the function. And again, not adding the Pokemon to this, already got this Pokenode that you've made with your previous function. You just want to go along the list of Pokemon in your Pokedex until you get to the last node, and then make that last one's next field point to this new node here that you've been given. Cool, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, this is how you would add the Pokemon to your Pokedex. You'd add it to the end of the current list of Pokemon you have in your Pokedex. Cool, so looking back at our add Pokemon function again now, remember the first step we said was going to be to make a new Pokenode. So for this we can use the new Pokenode function that we've created, which takes in a Pokemon, this Pokemon over here, and then this returns a node. We then take that new node and add it to the end of the Pokedex. So we'd call our add to end function, add that to the end of our Pokedex. So that's the Pokedex we were passed in over here. 
and then that's this new node that we've created over here. And then that's it, you're done. You've successfully added the Pokemon to your Pokedex. Hopefully that's all made sense. If you've got any questions, ask them on the class forum. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video.